Hi, welcome to Link Asia. I'm Kara Suboy. Yul Kwan is on vacation. The westernmost state of Myanmar, or Burma as it's also known, is under martial law. Days of ethnic and religious violence in Rakhine State have killed dozens of people and driven hundreds out of their villages. The violence pitted ethnic Burmese against migrants from Bangladesh and India. Added to the mix is that the Burmese are Buddhist and the migrants are Muslim. The skyline near the state capital, Sitwe, was ablaze earlier this week. Mobs from both communities ransacked and burned homes. The violence was sparked by the rape and murder of a Buddhist woman in late May, allegedly by three Muslim men. In retaliation, a Buddhist mob attacked a bus and killed 10 Muslims. Since then, gangs from both communities have attacked each other. Some reports say 21 have died. Others claim there are more than 100. The government has reinforced the police and called in the army. Hundreds of Muslims have tried to escape to neighboring Bangladesh, but the Coast Guard there won't let them in. To help us understand the root causes of the violence and whether it threatens the Burmese reform process, we have Professor Toon Mient from Carleton College in Minnesota. Professor Mient is a Burmese exile and teaches political science. And thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Why don't you start by telling us something about the tensions that already exist between the Buddhist and the Muslim communities in Rakhine? At the communal level and ethno-communal relation level, yes, it has been uh, a long uh, history of, uh, um, sort of, so to speak, um, struggle between uh, different uh, ethnic groups and also the religious groups inside Burma, especially the uh, Burmese Muslim groups and the majority Buddhist Burm Burmese people. So this is not uh, really a new conflict. It is the conflict that is rooted in the history of Burma with the colonial by the British Emperor and also since the independence, the communities, once they gained the freedom from uh, British colonial power, they had to sort it out uh, differences among themselves, but those differences, uh, the sorting of these differences were halted by the authoritarian emergence of authoritarian regime in Burma. So the authoritarian regime basically somewhat controlled these um, uh, potential conflicts under their um, authoritarian rules. And now with the uh, transition to democracy, with the opening of news media and opening of freedom of expression to some extent, these conflicts begin to uh, surface in Burmese politics. Now, some analysts are saying that the military-backed government is inciting the violence. What's your take? Do you think so? The, within the military uh, control civilian government now, there are uh, the, their own former generals and their, their relatives and elites who work with, who used to work with the military regime in the past had accumulated, accumulated certain wealth. And although at the same time, some of the Burmese Muslim, Muslims who are also in the Rakhine state has accumulated some of the wealth as well. So I think local politics here is creating some of the friction uh, between the, the, the business leader who were a part of the military regime to some extent in the past and business leader who are a part of the Burmese Muslim community in Rakhine State. So they may be creating somewhat political conflicts to eliminate one another. From what we've seen, Burmese media, including social media, seems to be stoking the violence by taking sides against the Muslims and even using the equivalent of the N-word to describe the Muslims. Have you seen this and would you agree? I am not surprised if these one of some of those individuals who have money, wealth, and also access to the internet and also access to some of the uh, people who can uh, write things in the media and internet um, might be uh, supported by these people to really create these kind of conflicts. So um, I think the, the freedom of the, the media, the internet, social media, uh, is being tested. How in a country like uh, Burma or Myanmar, which is transitioning to democracy, uh, might utilize internet, social media, and how that utilization might hinder the progress towards transition to democracy, and or how might uh, how might the social media internet internet induce uh, democratization in Burma? I mean, these are these are uh, all possible um, 
question to be um, pondered upon in, in, in Burma now. Great, thank you so much. Toon Miant is a Burmese exile and a professor of political science at Carleton College. You can learn more about him on our website. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.